What's the difference between ever and always? And how would you use these two in different parts of speech? Hmm, that's a really great question. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Of course, I'm Jennifer from jforestenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new video. Now, let's dive in with today's lesson. What's the difference between ever and always? This is a really great question I got from one of my students, Elaine. Hey Elaine, how's it going? Now, Elaine's also a member of the Finally Fluent Academy, my premium online program. Now, Elaine wanted to know how these two are different and specifically, she gave me an example sentence. So she wanted to know in the example, does your husband ever buy you flowers? Can you replace ever with always? And will it mean the same thing? This is an excellent question and I'm glad she asked because yes, you can replace it. No, they don't mean the same thing. So let's start with ever, okay? Ever is only used in question form. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. We use it with questions, okay? So let's take that question. Does your husband ever buy you flowers? Now this sentence is grammatically correct and it's very commonly asked. Now, when we use ever, we're asking about at least one time, okay? At least once. So let's say that here is the timeline of you and your husband's relationship, okay? So let's say you've been together for seven years. Now, does your husband ever buy you flowers? We just need, in that seven year time, if your husband bought you flowers once, at least once. It doesn't even have to be twice. It can simply be once. So one time in seven years, once, then you can reply back and say, yes, yes, he does. Okay. So at least, you know, once, and we don't know where that point in that seven year relationship, he bought you flowers. That's not really clear. All we know is that at one point in your relationship, he bought you flowers. Okay. Now let's look at always, always we use, we can use it in questions, but honestly, it's not the most commonly used in questions, but it can be used. So we can use it in questions and we commonly use it in positive statements. Okay. And it's more common to use it in statements. So the question was, does your husband always buy you flowers? Does your husband always buy you flowers? So let's talk about how we use always. So I'm going to put a timeline. So let's just take your work week. We'll make this a very easy example with our timeline. So it'll be Monday through Friday. Now with always, here's the action. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that's always. So we would use this maybe in, do you always take the bus to work? You know, you take the bus on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday every day, right? So we use always in the sense of every day, all the time. Now native English speakers, we probably use this even if we don't take it on Wednesday, I would still probably say always. So we're a little bit more flexible in that, but by definition, it would be all the time. 
So if your time reference is Monday through Friday, it would be every single day. So does your husband always buy you flowers? You would imagine that, well, let's say flowers last for one week, okay? So it would be every single week he buys you flowers. So that action is happening over and over and over again. So it's the difference in the frequency of the action, okay? In this case, with ever, the action has to happen only one time. In this case, the action is happening every single time or at least the majority of the time. Now, remember I said it's more commonly used in statements, right? I always take the bus. I always buy fresh flowers. I always drink coffee in the morning. I always wake up at six. So let's say you asked me, okay, so let's say I told you I wake up at six. And then you could use always as a question just to ask about the frequency because maybe you're not sure. Was it just today? Is it every day? So let's say that's the conversation. Oh, today I got up at six. Do you always get up at six? Yes, I always get up at six. Now, in this case, it would be maybe my friend saying, oh, you know, today I got up at six. Now she doesn't know what time I get up. So she doesn't know if I've woken up at six at least once. So she could say like, oh, today I woke up at six. Do you ever get up at six? So she wants to know at least one time, have you gotten up at six? And then, to answer this question, because we're talking about frequency in the present simple, right? You guys know we're in the present simple, right? Because we're using does here and always, these are time references for the present simple. So in this case, if my friend asked me, do you ever get up at six? Now, I could use an adverb of frequency in the present simple. I could say, well, sometimes, sometimes I get up, get up at six, or, you know, I frequently get up at six. I never, which would be the opposite of always, I never get up at six, okay? So you would most likely answer using an adverb of frequency because we're in the present simple. So I really love this question because we got to talk about the present simple, adverbs, frequency, so really great question. And remember, bottom line, Yes, both questions are grammatically correct. You can use always in question form, although it's more common to use always in statements. Ever is only, only used in question form. Repeat, only used in question form. And although both questions are grammatically correct, the meaning is very different. So I hope that answers your question for you. Now, if you have any questions that you want me to answer, make sure you just put your question in the comment and I'll definitely answer it in my next video. So to practice, why don't you put a question using ever in the comments, okay? And then try putting a question or a statement using always in the comments as well. It's really important that you practice these concepts. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. Now, in this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. Some flowers for me? Thank you. Now, don't stop there. Check out this video and don't forget about this video and make sure you subscribe and until next time, bye.